An automated market maker, or AMM, is one of the most popular DeFi applications today. And AMM is a decentralized asset trading pool that enables market participants to buy or sell cryptocurrencies, specifically ETH and ERC20 tokens on Ethereum. AMMs are non-custodial, meaning you never give up control of your funds, like on a SEX, on a KEX, or whatever a centralized exchange is called these days, thank you Mr. Light, and they're permissionless in nature, meaning all you need is an Ethereum wallet to trade or provide liquidity to earn fees while others trade with your tokens. The golden child of DeFi, Uniswap, has boasted over $3 billion in total value locked and eclipsed popular centralized exchanges in trading volume like Coinbase and Kraken for the first time ever in 2020. So what's so special about Uniswap and AMMs like it? Well, we'll cover all that and how AMMs ushered in DeFi trading activity that's continued to grow at a remarkable pace the last few years. Uniswap pioneered the concept of an automated market maker, or commonly called AMM, and they launched it in October 2018. The AMM in DeFi flipped the idea of a decentralized exchange on its head in three ways. Firstly, an AMM makes it easy and user-friendly for anyone to provide liquidity for new ERC-20 tokens paired with ETH. The days of waiting for a centralized exchange to list your token are gone. And as soon as teams launch a token, they can deposit that into a new pool in Uniswap and traders can instantly begin buying and selling the token. And this is what we're referring to when we say Uniswap and AMMs are special due to being completely permissionless. Secondly, Uniswap presented a shift from the centralized model of collecting 100% of trading fees to a community-owned DEX where those providing liquidity earn all the fees. And if they're ever a co-op bookstore of crypto trading, Uniswap is it. They empower their users with the ability to provide liquidity for any token and start trading those tokens instantly. And those who provide liquidity earn a portion of fees paid by those trading. In Uniswap, it's been a simple, flat 0.3% fee, and so if I hold 1% of the liquidity in a pool like ETH DAI, then I earn 1% of all fees paid by traders. Historically, the most volatile days in crypto, especially market crashes, have only benefited centralized exchanges collecting record revenue on record trading volume. With Uniswap, suddenly the Uniswap community that powers all liquidity provisions can earn record fees on record trading volume days like these. And this is part of the reason behind the cult-like following of Uniswap. Finally, Uniswap and AMMs like it represent yet another way DeFi has provided a parallel to legacy finance where you can maintain 100% control of your funds. And when you trade on a centralized exchange, there's always risk to depositing because you have to trust that exchange not to lose your funds. But with AMMs like Uniswap, you trust no one but the code. And in the case of Uniswap, it's a very well battle-tested code with billions of trade volume over the last few years, plus countless audits. There is, of course, still a risk to using Uniswap, but you notably escape the need for KYC or any sort of sign-up. It's a cypherpunk dream realized in the form of code that can outlive the team who created it. Pretty profound. One of the most important new tools to master in DeFi is trading on decentralized exchanges on Ethereum. For those trading tokens powered by Ethereum, ERC20, it's important that we can find the best trading rates across a growing list of liquidity sources in DeFi. It's kind of similar to searching for the best flight rate. Do you check each airline website one by one, or do you rely on search engines or aggregators like Expedia or Google Flights to guide you to the best deals? And that's exactly what we'll discuss in this video with the DEX aggregators. Now, while many of us have used popular AMMs like Uniswap, Balancer, Curve, and the like, the truth is we should all abandon trading on these individual platforms when DEX aggregators source liquidity from all of these liquidity sources, plus countless others. Sure, you might like Uniswap or Balancer, but there's no reason to pay higher rates in certain instances when a DEX aggregator can guarantee you a better rate and minimal slippage. Whether it comes from Uniswap or Kyber or Balancer or Mooniswap, yes, there's an exchange called Mooniswap, or SushiSwap, yeah, there's one of those two, and more. Think of the DEX aggregator as the search engine for your DeFi trading. The aggregators even split up your trade across different liquidity sources to improve the price. And it's not just a matter of knowing where to trade in DeFi anymore. Due to the algorithmic order routing, you'd likely never be able to find better rates searching on your own. You'd be competing against continuously refined algorithms to optimize trade routes, rates, slippage, and of course against the backdrop of major liquidity fluctuations in real time. So if you're interested to try a DEX aggregator, well, where do you go? Well, the most reputable ones on Ethereum, in no particular order, are as follows. 
one inch exchange, and this is the one with the highest trade volume. There's also Paraswap, there's Matcher by Zero X, and there's Dex.ag. Some catchy names. In the future, you'll likely see Dex aggregators built into every DeFi wallet and product, and we're starting to see these already in MyEtherWallet and MetaMask. And as the API for Dex aggregators becomes the common engine amongst different DeFi applications, this is sure to grow. Zapper Exchange is also powered by the same API as Matcha.xyz that uses the OX API. And if one uses Matcha to trade and uses Zapper to track their DeFi portfolio, well, they might as well use Zapper Exchange since it's just Matcha reincarnated. Still with me? Yield farming is one of the many memes that was created by the DeFi community. While it's a term that gets kind of tossed around loosely, there is a narrower criteria to define what exactly yield farming is. Firstly, it refers to when DeFi market participants use assets that would otherwise be sitting idly in their wallet. And secondly, it often requires providing liquidity or lending liquidity in a permissionless DeFi protocol to earn passive income. Thirdly, it results in one earning more than one form of yield simultaneously, thanks to the symbiotic nature of earning incentives, often across multiple DeFi apps. And fourthly, yield can come in the form of interest, market-making fees or liquidity provider fees, and protocol rewards, which commonly comes back to governance tokens. Now, despite some of the Chad-like behavior associated with yield farming, Farming really does represent a culmination of all we've ever been promised in crypto, an alternative peer-to-peer -peer finance system. Yield farming programs, also known as liquidity mining, were actually pioneered in DeFi by Synthetics, a protocol that offers on-chain exposure to any asset using derivatives. With yield farming, a protocol will reward its early users by paying them in the protocol native token, like Comp, like Wi-Fi, and yes, even like Pickle. It's the equivalent of a Web3 customer acquisition cost, paying early users in the native token that powers your DeFi application, and it often involves voting rights in future upgrades to the protocol. Why not reward those who believe in you early and risk capital to make you successful? Now imagine if Facebook could have rewarded early Facebook users in their own Facebook token, which would allow users to vote on the future of Facebook and see some return in trading the token. Well, if Facebook launched now, that is probably what would happen. And today, we have even simpler examples of yield farming like Compound Finance, where anyone who borrows or lends on Compound continuously earns a portion of the daily issued comp, which is the governance token of Compound. And one can easily earn lending interest and comp simultaneously for lending assets on the platform. And comp gives users a voice in the future upgrades and proposals of the Compound protocol. But, they can also easily sell that comp on an AMM like Uniswap. Now, yield farming is not just about earning insane yields over a short period of time on hyperinflationary tokens, despite what the headlines might tell you. When applied with well-designed incentives and a strong product market fit in DeFi, yield farming can actually quickly bootstrap liquidity in the most promising future DeFi applications. It's no coincidence that Synthetics has remained one of the top 10 DeFi apps in TVL and users over the last two years and no coincidence that Uniswap continues to be used in other yield farming programs to similarly establish liquidity in new DeFi apps. You've been watching DeFi 101. Do be sure and check out the other videos in this series and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the new videos as they drop. And above all, stay safe out there.